Our dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this Wednesday morning. Thank you um, for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for safety and protection. Even as we begin the show today, we continue to ask for your spirit to lead us and to guide us. Would you encourage those who are, are weary, those who are feeling low this morning? Would you um, even heal those who are not feeling well? May your power, oh God, just transcend over every situation in our lives today. Thank you even for um, our pastor here. As we begin this topic, we ask for your blessing upon him as he shares. And even for every other segment of this show, may you be glorified through all that we say and do here today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. All right. Well, then let's take a look at our scripture for the day. Today we're going to be reading from Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 to 22. And it says this, When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the desert toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear an oath. He had said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. Verse 20, after leaving Sukkoth, they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. That's Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 to 22, forming the scripture as we talk about the children of Israel today. With us here, we have Pastor Tony Ajidua Karibusana from Sounds Reconciled good. Church. Thank you so You're much. well? Very well. Good, Pleasure good, good. Yeah. I'm excited to talk about the children of Israel. Yeah. I mean, they definitely were a very interesting bunch. I mean, God had such a special relationship with them, yeah. but at the same time, they did a lot of things to mess up that same relationship. Well, like you said earlier on, this is the story of our lives even yeah. this day. Yeah. Um, where God is doing all that he can to bring us to an expected end. But uh, for some reason, we still dabble into the world system, mm. which is basically what takes us away from him. Yeah. The mindsets of the world, the lack of understanding, our inability to follow what he tells us to do. All that is, is a mixture of uh, craziness, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, um, maybe I, I want us to kind of go through a little bit of their background. Yes. Talk about any strengths they had. I know we never really get to hear whatever strengths they had, yes. but any strengths that they had, as, as well as any weaknesses, maybe we can get through that before I have to go on break. And then when we come back, I really want us to focus on some of the lessons yes. that we can draw from their lives. Yes. So to begin with, is there anything sort of positive or one of the things that really stands out to you as a strength about the children of Israel? I can't really tell you one now <laughs> because uh, these are unique people. Yeah. That's just the truth. But um, what God did was, and I think that's what he does even this day, is when he's leading a people and he has an agenda in his mind, things he wants to fulfill on the earth using his people. Uh, but they can't see it. They are not ready. They are not paying attention. What God does is, and, and I thank God for that, he continues to, you know, move on with the program. Whether they understood it, liked it, you know, appreciated it, God just keeps going because he has timing to these things. There are seasons. Mm -hmm. These things are already program to happen in a certain way and, and I will show you the details okay. uh, this particular scripture struck me because I mean there are many scriptures we can look at uh, in relation to children of Israel but this particular scripture for me showed transitioning twice for one man mm -hmm. that's Joseph Joseph is the man who God used to bring them to Egypt remember and when they were about to leave they remembered what Joseph told them which is pick up my bones so Joseph transited Israel 
as we know it, into, into Egypt, okay? And he was the man whom I can talk about as a man who, you know, uh, had strength. Yeah. As one of the children of Israel. Okay. All right. So we might have to park him <laughs> yes. aside because I know we're going to talk about that separately. Yes. Um, so the children of Israel on their own. Yes. Uh, uh, except, not really displaying some no. strength, other than this fact that God really did have something very special yes, about them. Yes, and he went on with it. Yeah. So what he did was raise individual uh, ministries, if you like, amongst them Okay. to help spearhead what he was doing. Because right. if, if he had left it with just the group of these are my people, yeah. it wasn't going to happen. So let's talk about the things that they didn't do right then. What were some of their weaknesses? Well, Again, they didn't know that God had a program, which is unfortunately what we're still dealing with today in, in church, mm -hmm. where we think church is just a jamboree, you know, pastor was on, on point today, the music was on point, what, what, socialization, we, you know, take pictures, what have you. That's not what God had in mind day one. Remember, uh, our, our forefather, Abraham, was told, leave your father's house, go to a land that I will show you. And God told him, listen, uh, I will give you, you know, children as numerous as, as the stars in heaven. Uh, I'm going to give you a great nation. So from day one, God had an agenda to make this, from this man, a nation. Mm. Um, but then when the program really began with Joseph being sold mm -hmm. into slavery, they were not paying attention. Again, it's, you know, another happenstance. This is Joseph. What? We don't like him. Sell him. He gets in there and manages to stay focused for about 13 years before he became, you know, the prime minister in Egypt. And then uh, eventually he had to tell his brothers and father and family to come over to Egypt. So the major program began then when they relocated to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now, why did God take them to Egypt? If God had left them outside of Egypt, imagine a family that is selling their brother and siblings. Nothing will remain of what God wants to do. So he brought them to Egypt to build them, force them to become this nation. Okay. All right? Uh -huh. uh, it seemed as if it was punishment or painful because of what they went through. But that was the only process that would bond them together as Israel. Okay. As soon as they got into Egypt, they were told, you know, you're headsmen, we don't like headsmen, go to Goshen. So not only were they in Egypt, they were in Goshen, particular, particular space and, and place to force them to love themselves, walk together, and then they became a nation. All right. But then God timed it in such a way that a day will come when he will then release them to become these things. But in between that time, he will look for, like I said, individual strength, Moses, uh, Joshua, Caleb, a few men were outstanding because they were paying attention to God. There was okay. the level for personal relationship, which we ought to have today. Right. Yeah. Okay. See, okay. We, we shouldn't have group mentality. Just everybody's following, following. No, we are following him. Yeah. And he is the leader. We should have something coming from him as individuals. Okay. Which then forms the, the, sure. the strength together. So I do need to take a break at this point. All but right. um, I think that's a good point to mm. raise that indeed. One of the weaknesses of the children of Israel mm. was this group mentality. Mm. Um, there was a lot of peer pressure, I guess, in, in that day, which is something that the rest of us experience as well today. Mm. Um, and uh, one of the other things about the children of Israel, God himself actually called them a stiff-necked stiff people. Yes. Oh my goodness. I want us to talk about that before we then drive into um, some of the different lessons that mm. we can actually apply uh, into our lives from the children of Israel. Triple mm. one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. And uh, remember, you can also comment on Facebook at Switch TV Kenya, and we'll be back after this. Hey guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I'm here with uh, Pastor Tony Ajidua from the Reconciled Church and we're talking today about the children of Israel. And uh, we've been hard pressed to find some of their strengths. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, we can find many weaknesses, mm. including the fact that God himself, you know, I guess their strength would be that God had really set apart this 
people, these mm -hmm. people, you know, to be his sort of special chosen people, the yes. one through whom the Messiah, yes. you know, the king of heaven and earth would, mm -hmm. would come through. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they just did not fit into that role very mm -hmm. well. And so we started then to look at some of their weaknesses, uh, including the fact that even after sort of setting these guys apart, God then at one point actually referred to them, maybe not even one point, several points, yeah, referred to them as a stiff-necked stiff people. people. Mm. And this is because they had a reputation of periods of estrangement from God. Mm. They would only remember him when oppression came. When they had need. Um, but in times of peace, they got super comfortable. Mm. They didn't think about their heavenly father. But God never forget, forgot them. And every time they'd you know, go back to because him, he would remember. Because of the program that I talked about. Right. Mm. So sounds familiar, right? 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 <laughs> like it's it's us basically. We are the children of Israel. Yes. Um and so maybe you can just comment briefly on that again. This this stubbornness that yes. they kind of, you know, yes. had is is a non-committal attitude that we have even today where you know, we're 50-50, 50, 50, 50 for God, 50 for ourselves. Uh, nobody wants to dive in 100%. Mm. And so after a while, devil comes up with a program and then we buy into it and become stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked in the sense that God wants us to go in one direction and then we want to go in another direction. If you picture the, what is it called, the uh, cult when they are being, you know, used for an errand. So you have to have a, some sort of cane mm. to, you know, align them. That's what God kept doing. Yeah. But it wasn't necessary if we understood, one, the God we're dealing with, to the agenda he had at the time or has at every given time okay. and align ourselves. It's very simple, by the way. Yeah. But because we have other attractions here and there, things are catching our attention. What we want, desires. Uh, one of the greatest pitfalls of an average Christian is his or her desire right. can lead you like in places you don't believe you can go to. Right. Uh, for example, the, 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 the need for safety and security. The children of Israel, when they went to spy out the land in Numbers 13, you know, Joshua and Caleb came by and said, we're well able to take the place in. The other people are saying, no, but our children, our wives, how are they going to be protected? See, so you're looking for safety, but you've forgotten that safety is in God mm -hmm. and in what he tells you or how he tells you to do it. Yeah, and it's such a reflection of us because exactly. we're, always, we're always trying to sort of help exactly. God Exactly, and help ourselves, you know. You know <laughs> God but is God, like, I don't need your help. Yes, but I need this, but this is, you know, my mates are married, I'm not married. I have, they, 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 we have needs yeah. as if God doesn't know. Now, the other day I was reading the story of uh, John the Baptist, but he speaks into this, how... An angel came and announced his birth, gave them his name, spoke about how he's going to be great before the Lord. He's going to bring back the heart of the children, back to the father, all that. John comes into town. He doesn't look like anybody in town. Mm. See, so John isn't worried about, am I going to marry? How do I have children? What, what? Because the focus is in what God wants me to do. Right. That's how it ought to be. So one of their weaknesses is, the, the, or, or what do you call it, uh, 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 lack of strength mm -hmm. is the inability to read the program on time. See, we're in joy, full, full circles with Joyce. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a program. There's a way, you know, we go and break all that. You need to have an idea of right. what we're doing. Yeah. We come into God just like, you know, oh, this is all, let's continue. Uh, yeah. No, and everybody's casual. We think, uh, and so have you been told before you are too spiritual? But everything is spiritual. There is mm -hmm. nothing that is not spiritual. Everything okay. begins from the spirit, ends in the spirit. Right. We, the spiritual uh, life is more tangible than the physical life. Okay. We forget that. Yeah. We think, oh, but we're in the world. You know, let's take it easy. So once you lose that track following God, something else will happen. All right. Mm. Let me read a few SMSs here. Actually, these are comments on our Facebook page. Um, I have, uh, let me scroll down here. Someone, uh, we've asked you to comment there on what you thought about the children, your thoughts on the children of Israel. You know, were they stubborn? Did they deserve to die in the wilderness? Because at some point, God was just like, you know what, I'm fed up with yes, y'all. This generation, out. <laughs> this generation is out. Mm. I need to start afresh. Mm. Can, you, can you imagine frustrating God yes. to that level? Yes, I mean, yes. crazy. But um, someone here, Modest Douglas and Derry says, they were very stubborn and they were forgiven many times but still didn't change mm. for all God had done for them. They mm. really deserve to die. Oh, we, guys. 
You know, we're talking about ourselves. I know. Eh? Uh, but thank you very much for that comment you're watching from Gidurai, uh, Gidunguri, sorry, Utawala. Mm. I have Melissa Mulandi who says, good morning, Joyce. I'm watching from Nakuru. Honestly, the children of Israel were very stubborn and were it not for God's love for mm. them, they would have died. But because they were his chosen people, they didn't. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, Clap, Patrice Madai, you tuned in from Roiru Bypass and you commented that you're really excited for the discussion. Thank you for that as well. And uh, over on our SMS line, I have Sospita Davis Wan Nanuki, and you say, Hey, Joyce and Pastime, blessed by the lessons this morning as always. Um, Becky from Kisarian says, Loving the show and super excited to watch the show. There's a number of lessons we learn from the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Now, as we talk about now uh, switching over to some of the things that we can apply mm. into our lives, mm. I, I think this is really where we see the grace of God absolutely check in. Yes. And I want to take us through some things with your comments here. Yeah. Um, that in many ways, these shortfalls of the children of Israel and their weaknesses are the reflection of now God and how his grace comes in. It's, yes. it's where we are stubborn, God is gracious. Yes. Where we are, you know, brewing hatred and spite among each other, like God provides yes. love and, and unconditional love yes. to us for that point of view. But maybe you can just begin to comment on one of the things that really stands out as far as how we today, you know, it's very yeah, easy to read to, this story yeah, and, and think just be about like, them, I, those people were stubborn. Yes. But I, for one, I'm well, grateful mm. that we have the scriptures <laughs> yes. so that I can see. We can learn from it. Yeah. And then we have the Holy Spirit as well, which was, as it were, lacking in their day. The Spirit found one man whom he uses to lead them. But the intention of God is that every one of us will be filled with the same Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and the same wisdom. So they didn't have that opportunity. But whatever opportunity God gave to them in their day was sufficient to lead them to the promised land, yeah. as it were. Now, some of the things we will begin to learn is, like I said, now we are more empowered than they were in mm. their day mm. to make real difference. And uh, if I was going to be hard on us, we're even the worst case scenario now, because despite all that God has done and is doing, we're still complaining, we're still murmuring in our day. We still don't focus on the program at hand. There are mm -hmm. things God wants to achieve part time, part season. Mm -hmm. He's not just there, you know, just roaming as God. No, there are specific things in his mind. Uh, I wish we had time. We can go into that. But specifically, with the story we read, particularly today, uh, there was a transitioning, like I said. Now, if you see the scripture as uh, is, is written, it says, God said, surely, uh, uh, no, God will visit you and, and shall carry you by, um, uh, ca he shall carry my bones. Joseph was telling them before he died. Uh, so Joseph was now, in case you're, not, you're missing God, Joseph is now speaking from the dead. Okay? To okay. them. Let's say they missed God. They didn't understand what God was trying to do in their day, this particular story. Joseph left an instruction. Pick up my bone. In other words, the day you pick up my bone, remember that the promise of God is true. Remember that he's going somewhere with this nation. Pay attention. And then the writer says that when God saw that they, they go through this side, they will see war, they will go back. But then God planned it that they will go through this other side. But through this other side, there's also a problem. There's the Red Sea. Yeah. So why is God doing all of that? He's trying to get them, even at this point that they're transitioning from Egypt to the promised land. To say, listen, okay, you've missed it all these years. I am giving you one more opportunity to focus on me. It's about me and my program, God is trying to say. So if we're going to learn anything from that today, we need to understand that all this we're doing, all this opportunity God has given to us, all this ministry, you know, we're on TV, what? It's not so that they see the shirt we're wearing or how mm -hmm. we're dressed and what. It's about getting the message across to the people of God. Right. We are vessels, platforms of honor, of grace mm. that he chose for specific things. If we are not that, we're wasting his time and his resources. Right. And, and God is reminding us today, even today, that every time he's looking for a people and he's found us in Christ, there's a reason. I mean, when we got born again, we could have gone to heaven immediately. Mm. God left us here. There's a plan. Yeah. Who is talking about this plan? Who is thinking sure. about this plan? Who, sure, sure. who is aligning with God?
to bear the fruit that God wants. Yeah, mm. and it, it makes, I think there's a quote that says it, I can't remember it exactly, but I'm going to paraphrase mm. it uh, in, in a way that we can all relate to. But literally that it's better to be, I don't know, a jembe mm. <laughs> in the hands of God mm. than, you know, this uh, humongous, than to be, you know, and have yes. limousines yes. and luxury yes. in the world. Better yes. to be a small thing, yes. a small tool yes. in the hand of God than yes. to have everything else, yes. you know, outside of him. And yes. I think, again, the children of Israel demonstrate that God literally had given, and I like how you're saying, it's not that they didn't have the Holy Spirit, that mm. that then prohibited them from mm. following. For their time, for their, for time, their season, whatever they were given, God had given was them enough. what they needed. Yes. Yeah. Now, today we have excess of what they had. But what are we doing with it? Yeah, we're probably worse. Actually. You see, because yeah. now we've, we've mixed up so much with the world. The world is so much in us. We, we're struggling with almost everything. The mm -hmm. basics of just a grateful heart, yeah. of, of understanding that the choice has been made in us, you know, right. uh, privilege we have so that we can align ourselves. We don't even have that. Now everybody's complaining. Everywhere I hear complaining, you know, Pastor, Pastor, this hasn't happened. I want this to happen. Mm -hmm. we, we are constantly making mm -hmm. demands, which is what they did in their day. Mm. God gave them water from the rock. They, were thin, they are not happy. He gave them quail. They are not happy. Mm. He gave them manna. Everybody's complaining. Is it only manna we'll be eating now? What? In the meantime, he didn't allow their shoes to wear out. He didn't allow their clothes to wear out on mm -hmm. them for 40 years in the wilderness. Mm. Can you imagine that? And God is trying to sh show to them, listen, I know what I'm doing. Just pay right. attention. Follow me. Listen and to And this is after he's literally parted a, an entire sea <laughs> yes, he did all kinds of things. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but they wouldn't see that. Uh, yeah. Everybody had their desires and how they wanted it. Moses went up the mountain to get the commandments. Seven days later, they are worshipping something else. Yeah. He comes down, he's wondering, what is going on with these people? And they had a priest amongst them, Aaron. <laughs> and how much were like that? Because, you know, like the Red Sea, yes. for example. I mean, God does a tremendous miracle before your eyes. Yes. Like it's so clear this is only God. Yes. And sooner or later, we're back to complaining and not trusting him yeah. and all of that. Yeah. But let me also point to some other lessons mm -hmm. here that again, kind of are then a reflection of God's greatness and mm -hmm. his glory. Mm -hmm. That the way to our promised land is not always easy. It really is, but it will always be worth it. Yes, that's correct. But this is the thing I want you to note, that with the grace and the love and mercy of God we're talking about, people still died. Mm -hmm. So the question is, God has a program, he's moving forward. Are you going to be part of that program? Are you going to be those that he will retire by himself? Mm -hmm. See, so grace is available, his love is available, yeah. but he wants, still wants people who are committed to this journey. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, he needs somebody to be the face of God in the day. Sure. Right? So, and that's what they, they couldn't be. And they, at some point, he says, listen, I'm retiring this whole generation. Let me train or raise a fresh generation. Yeah. So who is it going to be in our day? Well, are we going to be the ones that is going to retire? Are we going to be the ones that is going to say, I'm yeah. continuing with you? Okay, so mm -hmm. definitely not an easy road mm. ahead of us, but it will certainly he be He takes worth care it. of it, yeah. like in this yeah. scripture. Yeah. It was a land of yes. milk and honey, yes. flowing with milk yes. and honey after all. <laughs> um, the other lesson that we can apply today is that God will make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. And of course, the parting of the Red Sea. Because it's his journey. Such a tremendous a miracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so even where we see, you know, an ending in a pavement, God has charted a way forward. Past you, know, you know, we call him the beginning and the end. The reason that name was given is because he considers the whole journey before it even started. Yeah. So but how come we don't know that? Yeah. Every obstacle we, we meet, we begin to scream out of control. We think he doesn't know what he's doing, you know, and, and he's planned it. Famously, I've asked people, you know, did you pray to become a Kenyan, Joyce? Did you ask God? See, he made that choice. If he did, then there must be a plan for you mm -hmm. to, you could have popped out in Tokyo mm -hmm. <laughs> somewhere. You know what I mean? But there's a plan in his mind yeah. when he's positioning people, placing them. Yeah. So all we need to do is rest and obey what he says. All right. Mm. The other thing, uh, which is actually in reference to the scripture we read today, is that God will actually lead us day and yes, night. Yes, Like his, his yes. provision, his guidance yes. is always there. Completely. That's his commitment. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's more committed to this journey than we are. 
and that's how it ought to be. Yeah. A teacher always knows better than the student. Yeah. You, because you are, you've been on this road before, you know what is there, what can happen, mm. and you put plans in place to protect your people. That's what God does best. Yeah. But when he does that, he expects us to also reciprocate by now saying, oh, if you can do that, like part the Red Sea, you know, he means business. So mm -hmm. let's pay attention. Yeah. But once we go to the other side, it's, oh, life is good. Da, 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 and we continue what we're doing. Yeah. We miss the point. Let me touch on this final one because yes. I need to wrap up now. But that sin will always take us farther than we want to go. Definitely. This is not something to joke around with. You know, it's playing with fire. Like yes. Before you know it, your yes. whole body is on fire. Yes. So. That's correct. And, and sin that I, want to, I would like to discuss maybe later sometime is... It's not just the sin of this, you know, flesh. We're falling today. See, I, Pastor, you know, my, I can't control my eyes. What, what? That, that's, you, you're still not even there. Mm -hmm. The sin I'm talking about now is you are in God, but you are unable to follow him. Mm. See, the greatest darkness is not Satan or, or witchcraft in your village. It's, it's that God has a mindset and you can't see where God is going with that mindset. An example is uh, Jeremiah. I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Mm. I've, I've appointed you a prophet to the nations. And Jeremiah says, but I'm a youth. That's the greatest darkness. Mm. You are not seeing what God is seeing. You, you, you profess God. You confess God. But you're still useless to him. He can't, wow. he can't find you of, of, to be of any use. Okay. Even though you say you are his. That's why call them I think we're going to have to have that discussion at some point. <laughs> yes. We'll have to park it for today though. Yes. But thank you Pastor Tony for coming through and just uh, showing us how much, uh, let's not read this Bible just as a story mm. book. Like read it with open eyes and ask God to really to reveal us. To himself to mm. us and teach us mm. uh, what we need to correct and adjust in our lives. Definitely. Lots of lessons. I, we've not even scratched the surface of the children of Israel. There's <laughs> yes. so much to learn from yeah. them. But um, I'm thankful for what we've, we've, we've had today. Bless God. Would you pray for us? Yes, please. So, Lord, we just want to thank you. We want to bless your name for your faithfulness, for yet another opportunity you've given to us to share your word. And I know that it's a blessing to us already and to your people that are watching and listening. I pray that continually you give us this opportunity to share and encourage us and teach us by your spirit so that we're able to focus on the things that matter and not be distracted by uh, the external worlds which will perish. Your wisdom continues to grow in us and you've given us favor before you and before men. I ask, oh God, that you'll bless us, continue to bless this program, that your name may be lifted high through it. I give you praise for what you have done, for it's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed and believed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for God coming bless you, through. Thank you. People can follow you? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. At Anthony Ajidwa. Okay, everywhere. Everywhere. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yes. All right, guys, we're going to take a break now. When we get back, we'll be learning about a day in the life of a Swahili TV news anchor. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. And I'll be back after this. Mm.